The Campbell County School Board voted Tuesday night to extend the contract for Director of Schools Donnie Poston by a year until June 30th, 2014. But it was divided on the question of making modifications to the contract. Board member Rector Miller pushed for modifications to include benchmarks that would target improved test scores. But the board attorney advised that changes to the contract must be made public for a period of 30 days before the board can give final approval. Following that, Mike Horick moved to approve the one-year extension with details of any changes to be worked out and voted upon after a workshop session. The board approved the extension 9-1 to with only Johnny Creekmore voting no. A motion to reestablish three standing committees failed to gain approval after those committees were disbanded following a complaint and threatened lawsuit that permanent standing committees violated the board's own policy manual. Miller argued for the need to reestablish the Building and Grounds Committee, of which he was chairman, insisting that many schools were in disrepair and the maintenance department needed close oversight by the board. Miller then offered a motion to authorize changes to board policy that would adopt the building and grounds, safety and athletic committees as permanent entities. The motion failed on a 5-5 deadlock vote with Chairman Josh Parker, Homer Rutherford, Mike Oreck, Scott Hill, and Eugene Lawson voting no. The board was not divided on the question of finalizing the sale of the former Ridgewood School Building. Despite failing to receive the published minimum bid of $100,000, the board voted unanimously to sell the property to Thomas Job for his high bid of $91,000. Miller encouraged the sale, pointing out that the building cost $3,600 for insurance and $10,000 for utilities each year that it stands empty. The board also voted unanimously to approve a contract with Mike Malakote's firm for a solar system that will involve installing solar panels on the roofs of nine county school buildings and selling the excess electricity that is generated to TVA. The school system should receive an average of $25,000 a year from the sale of the excess electricity. Malakote pointed out that the panels will be freestanding and not involve puncturing the roof structures. The three Jellicoe schools will not be included in the program, he added, because Jellicoe Utilities wanted to charge a $750 application fee for each school before allowing the firm to evaluate the buildings. The board also approved a $2,500 donation to the newly formed Campbell County High School Fishing Team. Lawson and J.L. Collins both voted against the motion after it was explained that the high school students involved in the program will participate in Bass Federation-sponsored scholastic tournaments but must have their own boats furnished by parents. Members of the American Federation of Teachers gave out canisters of Christmas candy to board members, but that did not deter Eugene Lawson from launching into a very humbug ad against the union as the meeting wound down. Lawson complained that previous boards had given everything to AFT and charged that Director Poston was continuing to go by terms of the union contract that was invalidated by the state legislature when negotiating with the union rather than board policy. Lawson failed to refer to any specific examples to back up his complaints, instead simply blasting the union as he pointed out that teachers will be voting Thursday on whether the AFT will continue to represent teachers or whether a more moderate union such as TEA 
will gain a majority of votes. Under the new system, no one entity will be able to speak for all teachers as a negotiating team of 7 to 10 representatives will be formed based on the corresponding percentage of support in the election. In previous elections, the majority, but not all, of the county's teachers supported the AFT as their representative union. Jolly St. Nick will make a stop at the La Follette Public Library Wednesday, December 19th at 1 p.m. He'll read a story to the children and take requests for Christmas gifts. Kids of all ages are encouraged to come, have their picture with Santa Claus, and enjoy Christmas cookies and lots of holiday cheer. And five locations were in the running. Then it was down to two the corner of East Central Avenue and North 1st Street and the corner of West Central and North 13th Street in La Follette were the final two spots it came down to for the corporate representatives from McDonald's. According to sources close to WLAF, the new McDonald's is going to be built on the former Claiborne Olds lot on Central at 13th Street. The three other potential locations were the former Walt Lyons home on West Central at South 13th, the old Regions Bank building next to First Baptist Church, and the vacant lot on East Central Avenue at North 6th Street. The official announcement from McDonald's is due out in early 2013 with construction expected to soon follow. And that's a look at the news. We'll be right back with a press release from our Sheriff's Department after this. And it looks like eight people have been booked in to the Campbell County Jail in the past 24 hours, according to the press release from the Sheriff's Department. Charles A. Burge, 33, of North Massachusetts Avenue, La Follette, for theft of property under $500. 38-year-old Dale Travis Chapman, of Coolidge Road, La Follette, for second offense DUI, impeding the flow of traffic and possession of alleged drug. Charles David Farmer, 27, of Habersham Road in Duff, entered the jail to serve court-imposed time. James Long, Jr., of Mill Lane in Jacksboro, was held for another agency. 42-year-old Matthew Mills, of Long Hollow Road, La Follette, on a capious bench warrant, resisting arrest, assault on a police officer, public intoxication, and criminal impersonation. Eric Spradlin, 31, of Main Street, Jacksboro, for driving while suspended, possession of drug paraphernalia, violation of the registration law, and violation of the Tennessee financial law. 29-year-old Jessica Leanne Williamson, of Duff Road and Duff for aggravated assault by domestic violence, and last today, Caitlin Jean Willoughby, 23, of Eastwood Drive, La Follette, for possession of a Schedule Four controlled substance. And that's a look at the news. Thank you for joining us. Stay with us. We've got lots more coming your way, and we'll see you back here again tomorrow evening. We sing happy birthday to you. Hey, Big Josh with you on this Wednesday evening, and we're going to look at birthdays and the anniversaries, and our birthday club and anniversary club is brought to you by WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli. Looking at our birthdays, we got a birthday from Saturday, Sam Hopkins celebrated. Happy belated birthday to you, Sam. And yesterday, Eddie Smitty and Teddy Smitty had a birthday. Happy birthday to Eddie and Teddy, and we hope you all had a great day. And uh, our anniversaries today, we have a couple, Chester and Karen McCamey, have been married 32 years today. Happy anniversary, uh, Karen and Chester. And Jack and Michelle Lynch have been married 35 years today. Happy birthday, a happy anniversary to Michelle and Jack. And we hope uh, 
your day has turned out really well. Now, if you're celebrating your anniversary today or your birthday, we want to remind you that we need to have your name on our list in order for you to qualify for the drawing to win a birthday dinner for two or an anniversary dinner for two from WLAF and East Side Pizza. And we do that drawing on Friday, so be sure and get your name in here, will you? Hey, we'll do all this again tomorrow at about probably the same time. Hang in there, will you?